Greeting to you, belaters. Uh, after seeing uh, Mr. U. Dizzy's video about getting them tools and stuff, I thought I might show y'all, maybe, maybe show him what it, he's already figured it out. But I'll show you what's to be done with it. Let me see if I can see. We have here a piston. Let me see if I can move the camera. Eye. Oh, you can see it. By golly, what are you talking about? Piston. This is the one for my Herald. You just take the rings off. The upper ring has already absconded. Let's break a few. That was an oil ring. This one's got a set of rings here, and it's got a goober ring down here. Another one, another oil ring. Woo! Hello. Okay. Anyway, this is a Ringlands cleaner, a ring groove cleaner. It's a little bit different than what you Dizzy's got, and I thought I had one just like his, and I may have somewhere. But it's got these replaceable teeth. And they're all different widths, because there's all different widths grooves in these things. This is a pretty thick one for, the, for that. Find the one that fits it the most thickest. And then find the one what works on the little thin compre mm, excuse me, compression grooves. And you just do one set at a time. Okay. Tighten it down on what you want, and this has got a a Horford dealy that tightens it up on it. And this groove here fits on the back side of whichever groove you're cleaning. I'm gonna clean the top one theoretically. Now, just like this. And it cuts the far end of it. Don't do this. It only cuts one way. And then, I wish I had my other one. My other one's so much better. You can see it's starting to clean the edges. And you start seeing aluminum. Stop! And check to make sure you've got it done. Make sure it's shiny all the way around. And have a small screwdriver or a bent over tool that you made. Make sure you got all that goober stuff out of here. And sometimes it makes a little notch whenever you stop. So you want to make sure it's all smooth and it doesn't leave that notch in it. But if you do it right, you won't need to leave a notch. And you clean the crap off of it. All this is is carbon. This is reducing your carbon footprint. Okay. Some of them's got a big hoop here that you can just do with your finger. I've had them before and used them. Every time I get mad at working on cars and stuff, I get rid of all my tools. Because I think it's the tools that are hurting me and not the way I use them. Go figure. Blame everything but me. Now an old mechanic told me, an old, some kind of a mechanic told me to leave this stuff in there so it'll make your rings tighter. <laughs> Which you don't want to do. They are just not the people I would probably follow. And uh, well, my other set just digs in. You only have to take two or three turns. But anyway, you see where you stop. Got that crap right there. Make sure it's smooth. Then when you get to the big one, you select the biggest one. It'll fit in the hole. Is that one? And you 
put this groove on the other side in the big groove. Slide this bad boy in there. I don't think I've ever used this one. Come on, you rat. It's got holes too. The, these does, and the, the thing will get stuck in them. You just gotta booger past them. Do the best you can. Take your time. You only have to do this a few times, and then the then you'll have good shiny ring lenses for your new pistons to love on, your new rings to have fun and not break. I think that's good. If it ain't good, I'll make it good later. Okay, with that one. Uh, Honing your cylinders. We all know this is what I call a dingleberry that hones your cylinders. These little abrasive balls gets in there and eats everything up. They're very abrasive. This is for a small block Chevrolet. Small block Ford, I guess. Never had to rebuild one of them. They just keep going. Big block Ford. I've done some of them in big block Chevrolet. If I'm ever... Uh, Lucky enough to build another Chevrolet big block. They're fun. They're fun when they get done. Anyway, these cut cut the uh, glaze in the cylinders. They don't straighten your cylinder bore. You got a wore out engine. It ain't gonna. Yeah, it's not what I would use. That's why they're so. They look like they're brand new because I don't like to use them. This this type straightens your cylinders as much as you can. Straight, straight rocks. You put them in there. This is the one I loan out. It's got cracks all over it where they busted the rocks and stuff. This is mine, the one I use. Nice, good, smooth blocks. And that one's pretty coarse too. And this is pretty got a fine, fine tooth on it. And you just put these in the cylinder, and it expands, and then you twirl it. And these flatten out against the cylinder and straightens out. If it's like that, it can straighten it out to some point. Not if it's awful, it won't. But it'll. It does a better, nicer job than these dingleberries. So, uh, gee whiz, I think that's all. It all it is. All I've got to show you. I'll continue doing these. There's only. Uh, I'm going to give that another lick or two and give it a bath. And then do some more. Pardon me. Ugh. I just hate these things. Ugh. It's like washing your feet with your socks on. And it's 17 degrees in Arkansas. They went from in the 50s and 60s to, to that. Pardon me. Hide your food. <laughs> I'm disappointed I don't have the old man honk. Old men can honk when they do that, and I haven't figured out how to honk like, like you need to. Okay, here's... Hang on, we're going to go somewhere else. Uh, here's the engine iron I've been working on. This is one going for Harold. It's... I got the cam all done and I got to do the polish the crank, finish cleaning up the bottom end and hone it out. I got the distributor all timed in and a new mailing oil, a new mailing uh, time and chain and all this other goober stuff. And I'll take that little hone, come here little hone, and I'll cram it in the hole. And I'll turn it with my drill and it'll be fine when I get ready. Till then I'm leaving it nasty. Because I've learned that the stuff that you leave on it is more of a protectant, believe it or no, or you don't have to believe it. 
than filling it full of WD-40 or, you know, you can grease it, it's good, but WD-40 has got water in it. But if you leave it nasty, this has been open to the world and raining and stuff for three or four weeks and it ain't rusted a pound in there. It's still good and shiny, even the cranks good and shiny. <coughs> Excuse mine. Are you picking a, picking a guitar? It's cold. She's cold. We're cold. She made me come out here, by the way. I was wanting to lay up and watch YouTubes all day. But I figure if we don't get out, we won't get out. Right there, kiddo. You want to go home? Oh, yeah. Not yet, Larry. Hang on. We got some rat killing to do. Uh, my paint's coming tomorrow for this. And it ain't, it's a week away from being clean and sanded down and I've got some Conquest rust converter and some other stuff. And I think I'll pull the transcription out. Since my, uh oh, since my back is about healed up from the other transcription I've done. Pull it out and get into the frame rails underneath and clean it up and paint it. And I've got to do something about these spaghetti wires. But I really enjoy wiring. I, I dig it, man. And it's going to have an alternator on it, so I'll do something with this. I use the uh, regulator on the good car for a junction block. I just left it on there and used it. So, uh, I may want to make it prettier on, on this car. This would be my my pretty car until I get ready to take this off frame and do it right. I'll drive the pudding out of it. Right, sir? Good girl. Then I got to rebuild these bad boys and figure out what I want to do with them. Put some good stuff in it. I think that's it. It was it probably 20 minutes ago. So, uh, I love y'all. And y'all take care. And, uh, and be careful. Hey, I found the button. Maybe I found the button. Are you still recording?